Hello, I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. Let's talk about the agency theory. Agency theory is all about how people act differently when they are dealing with resources other than their own. So let's start with a simple example. You go to visit either your boss or a parent, and your boss or your parent says to you, your car is an absolute disgrace. You need a new car. Let's go buy you a new car. Now, if you're like most other people, you will think, aha, they are going to pay for the car. I want you to picture in your head right now the kind of car you would desire if you thought your boss or your parent was going to buy you the new car. Now, as you are driving to the mile of cars with your boss or your parent, they say, oh, by the way, you're paying for this car. Now, I want you to picture in your head the car that you now have in mind for your next car. Did it change? If it did, then you'll see what the agency problem is all about. People expend other people's resources differently than they expend their own. Now, this may be something horrible that you haven't considered about yourself and you would never have thought about yourself in that way. But you need to realize that this is rational. Rational self-interest is what we call this, and it is evolutionarily in all of us. Think about it this way. If your ancestors had not been rationally self-interested in feeding themselves and their offspring, would you be here today? The answer is no. And so it's silly for us to think that people are going to treat other people's resources the same that they would treat their own because everyone basically wants more for themselves. Now some of you are still not convinced, so I want to throw this one out to you. You are out for pizza with your friends. If you don't like pizza, just assume that you like pizza. Maybe it's quiche. Who knows? And there's one piece left. You're hungry. And everybody is eyeballing that last piece of pizza. Who do you think should have that piece of pizza? We all know the answer. We all think that we deserve the last piece of pizza. We all want the last piece of pizza. And that's the agency problem in a nutshell. We're rationally self-interested. We are certainly willing to expend other people's resources differently than we would be willing to expend our own. Now let's take this out into the world of business. And we see the agency problem show up in several different ways. The most obvious would be between the owner of a business and the employees. We call this the principal agent problem. This is where the ownership of the uh, company and the control are separated. And so you've got someone who owns the company, and by rights, the money in the company all belongs to the owner. And then you have the managers who work for them. They are the agents. And they actually control how that money gets spent. And so here we have one group of people spending another group of people's money. And what that means is they are going to spend it differently than if it were their own. Example. How many CEOs fly around in corporate jets? Now they'll tell you that their time is valuable and of course they need to have the convenience and flexibility that a corporate jet offers them. But the question then becomes when they are on their own time, flying on their own dime, how do they travel? Do they charter a corporate jet? Do they charter a private jet? Absolutely not. They typically wind up in first class on a commercial flight with the rest of us in the back. And so that really doesn't point to them requiring that corporate jet. It's just something that they are willing to engage in because it's someone else's money that they are spending. And then another way that we see the agency problem is between majority shareholders and minority shareholders. Majority shareholders will sometimes use their majority vote 
uh, possibilities at the firm in order to basically steal from minority shareholders, or at the very least, they manage the firm to benefit the majority shareholders and leave out the minority shareholders in their decision processes. And we've seen this before in uh, certain firms where the founders will keep super voting rights and then sell off the great majority of the firm and then use their super voting rights to actually expropriate wealth from the minority shareholders. This is, first of all, it's unethical, it's immoral, but it does happen. And we always say in finance that when voting rights and cash flow rights don't match up, you end up with corporate governance problems. And this is one of the problems that we're talking about. And then the other way that we see the agency problem, actually just one other way that we see it, is between the owners and the debt holders. And so when you borrow money as an owner of a business, it provides some strange incentives. The first one would be asset substitution. And that is where I tell you that I'm going to use this money for something very safe. And so you'll grant me a low interest rate on a loan. And then I take it out and buy something very risky. And we know that the riskier it is, the higher the return it requires. And therefore, for the same set of cash flows, the lower the present value. And so you have an immediate loss in value of the loan that you, the money that you loaned to me. And then the other part of the agency problem I'd like to talk about is the problem between the shareholders and the board of directors. Keep in mind that the board of directors are elected to represent the shareholders. But in essence, they are merely agents of the shareholders. And as a result, we are right back to the principal agent problem. And we see board members all the time acting not directly with the same interests of the shareholders because they can, can sometimes become captured by the CEO and end up acting more in the interests of the CEO than they do of the shareholders who elected them. And so we have all sorts of different manifestations of the agency problem. Now, how can we control the agency problem? Well, there are some things we can do. Number one, monitoring. By keeping an eye on the managers, we can help to minimize this kind of behavior. Keep in mind, we are never going to eliminate all agency problems but we can try to minimize them by doing things like monitoring, keeping an eye on. After all, ask yourself this, when are people more likely to do what's right? When they are being watched or when they think nobody is watching? Another thing we can do is the managerial compensation contract. We want to set things up so that managers only get rich when shareholders get rich. How do we align the interests of the managers with the shareholders? Through stock options and stock grants. And we also have the managerial labor market. The labor market, or the market for the CEO labor. You may not think of CEOs as being labor, but they are, just like any factory worker. Anyone who trades their time for money is labor. And so by that definition, so am I, labor, a professor. I'm trading my time with you for money. Now, I, I like you guys, but I wouldn't do this job if I didn't get paid. So that makes me labor. Okay. Now, it turns out that there is only a limited pool of people who are capable of doing this kind of work. If a, a manager gets known to be uh, engaging in these kinds of behaviors in a, in a bad way, egregious way, then it will become uh, published in the Wall Street Journal or other similar publications, and the next time that that person is out looking for a job, they will pop up in Google searches for their wasteful spending at their previous employer. And so what we say is that this threat of the future labor market for these folks helps to limit their willingness to engage in these kinds of behaviors. 
But that only works if we're talking about people who plan to get another CEO job. But what if you're a 64-year-old guy and you've got a mandatory retirement age of 65 and then no one else is going to hire you? Would that act as a constraint on you? Absolutely not. You're probably going to be spending a lot of time at the golf course. And are they going to fire you? No, because by the time they get through with all the legal problems of firing you, that one year will be up. And so basically at that point, uh, they, they just put up with the bad behavior. Okay, so uh, another one that we can use to control agency problem is through debt. And we see that managers uh, get into trouble when there is too much free cash flow. Now what is free cash flow? It's the cash coming into the company minus that needed to meet all the expenses and the investment opportunities, the positive NPV projects of the firm. If there's a lot of money over and above that, of course what the firm's management should be doing is either paying it out as a dividend or repurchasing the firm's shares because after all that cash doesn't belong to the managers, it belongs to the shareholders. But what we see is that when that cash flow, if they don't do that, it sits around, it starts to call to the managers and they want to start to spend that money. And of course they end up spending it in ways that are not in the best interest of the shareholders. So how can we limit that kind of behavior? We can get rid of the free cash flow. But how can we get rid of the free cash flow? We can take on additional debt at the firm and use that money to buy back shares. And so now we've traded equity for debt and that debt has fixed payments. The fixed payments being the coupons on the bonds. And those coupons on the bonds are a fixed amount of money those managers have to come up with every six months. And so this helps to keep a better hold on their wasteful spending than equity because after all with equity dividends don't have to be paid. They are only paid if declared by the board of directors and as we mentioned previously the management can capture the board of directors and basically get them to stop paying dividends which would give them lots of free cash flow. But the only way they're going to get away from paying those bond coupons is by paying off the bond issues. And so this helps to get rid of free cash flow. It helps to control the agency behavior.